So today we're going to do a recap of The Nightmare Within that was released on November 12th, right? No, no, no. Why not? I, wasn't that the plan? I just, I just, <laughs> I just wanted to say no. Ah, I thought maybe there's another tower you wanted to talk about. The pinky tower. It, the stinky it's pinky it's tower. Pen. <laughs> Don't be an idiot. Alright, um... I guess we'll just start off by saying, uh, well, what did you think of the Tower of Nightmares overall? I think, for me, I'll I'll save my opinion for a little later, but it also kind of opens up some problems that I have with the living story overall, and then uh, I'll try to touch on that. But what what are your thoughts about the Tower of Nightmares and just the whole Nightmares within patch? From maybe from the last patch that we did the story and they're introducing the tower, and then this patch now. Well, the big tower itself is it's, it's all right. I mean, you go in there, you do your stuff, you kill everything, kill the monsters, and about to the levels, get the keys, and do the chambers and stuff. But the story of it seems just it seems very weak. I mean, that crater hiding crate and those uh, the nightmare court formed an alliance together. They're hiding a giant tower. And Scarlet's all behind it, who magically just... She doesn't even show up at the end. She just, like, has a cutscene. Which was... It was like, oh, God. Not her again. Why? Why Why does she need to be in this? This was just ridiculous. Not only that, but they... They, uh... Basically said that she was involved in everything. The Flame of Frost living story and everything. And it's pretty much this... Supposed to be this evil villain that had a hand in... Every single living story that we've been in so far, and honestly, the delivery was like, uh, I don't know, like when I did the, when I did the, um, what's it called, the toxic hybrid, when you do that whole story, it's, the delivery just was really weak, and honestly, I really didn't care that she was behind everything, I don't know, that was just we, my, my own opinion. I think it was, it was more the fact that we already knew she was behind everything. Yeah, it's just it's like, the delivery um, was pretty shit. When is when is this? Ah, oh, I just died. When is this girl gonna die though? Is what right. is what I'm. Uh... The thing is, see, you don't want to drag out a single villain for so long. I mean, look at you go look at comic books and things like that. They have so many different types of villains. I think it's time we just kill her when the years come to a close. Let's yeah. just get a big axe and just chop. <laughs> no, why an axe? Get, with a, it. get a torch. <laughs> Do it, do it the right way, Sirs. There's no, only one right way to kill to kill a Savari. That's with that's with fire. Eat it to death with a shield, and then set its corpse on fire. <laughs> we'll hang her like a witch and burn her alive. No, yeah. I don't know. There's there's a couple of things that I've uh, I have problems with with the uh, recent living stories, and that's the rewards are tied to the achievements and your meta achievements. So like the gas mask is awesome. And I think the problem that it creates, like with the Tower of Nightmares, is that you start seeing a really big decline of population within the tower. Because once people finish their, their meta achievement and get the gas mask, or if that's what they wanted, then people just stop coming. And especially the Tower of Nightmares, it's uh, it's quite difficult to get through it by yourself or even with a small group, especially once you get to like the third level. And it kind of kills the content when you don't have that flood of people in there. I think if I think they need to tie the like tangible rewards to actually doing the content rather than just finishing your achievement. Like the that's how the Flame of Frost was with the jetpack. Once he killed the boss, he had the chance to get the jetpack. I mean, if they put the jetpack there for if they put it there for like just doing your achievements, I don't think Flame of Frost the Molten Alliance. Uh, Weapons facility would have been nearly as as popular as it was. Um, definitely. I think I think yeah. The point uh, you're getting it that it's um the the tower exists to fulfill the achievement that are achievements that are just there. So it doesn't really have a purpose aside from you do the meta achievement and that's it. It's sort of a habit they've gotten into that I'm starting to not like. 
when they're putting the all yeah. the rewards in the uh, in the achievements themselves. I I would much rather get rewarded for finishing content, and it gives you a chance. It gives you a purpose to actually farm so, some content. If there's like a drop you really want, as opposed to just finishing your meta achievements. But overall, man, I thought the tower was fun. The first first few times I went through it, I thought just the whole the whole feeling and the uh, well, I guess just the feeling of the tower it was great. It really did feel like you're running through just chaos, really, inside the tower, trying to get to the top, and it was it was it was madness. It was pretty crazy. But as every time I go in, I start seeing less and less people, and it's get, it's starting to become not as fun anymore. That's it. I finished the whole thing within a day, which was uh, yeah. It's like hmm, done already. There's actually just no point coming back to this town now. Yeah, pretty much. Because you got your meta achievement done, so there's no reason. Yep. You got what you wanted, you got your gas mask. Where other games did make you repeat that content to try to get that drop, which I think is fine. I mean, there's already farming and things like that in Guild Wars 2, where they, you know, they could do things like that. I, but that's why I love the Flame of Frost one. We kept going in that dungeon, because we really wanted the jetpack. Even the, uh, uh, the Aetherblade Retreat one, the dungeon, was pretty cool because you could get the monocle off of the last boss. It's not something you could just get through your achievements, which anybody can get the achievements done, but not everyone can can do the that last boss fight over and over again. That's it, though. I think I'm kind of thinking that it um, doesn't even need to be much that it's repeatals, but it needs to be so much that you need to be there or something other just finishing the meta achievement like they and say it, it was like um the frame and frost frost and flame one but you've got the um the end reward you, you got like gold or something for doing it you just go through it and you have the chance of getting a whole bunch of different stuff it wasn't only the the uh the jetpack you also had the was it Arik Elkin viewed inscriptions for the Sentinel Scare and stuff from there? Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. I think you also had a recipe that you had the, you had the uh, mining nodes at the beginning as well. Yeah, those two. It, it, would, it would encourage you at least to come back once a day, which is cool. Because you've got content that you can do. For sure. With this, with this one, it's you go in, you do it once, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. If you've finished everything. Maybe do you done. think it being open world has something to do with that? Well, do you think they should have maybe instanced it off? Yeah. Just because they made it open world, um, they kind of made it pretty weak in what you can do with it. I mean, there's only so much you can do with open world before it just becomes something that people don't want to do. Which is unfortunate. I mean, you look at the, uh, what is it, Balthazar Temple that's really done. It's open world stuff. <laughs> yeah. The quarter thing is only done by a small fraction of the population. I definitely feel that they should bring more instances into the game. I love what they do with open worlds. Yeah. Not, not many MMOs do what they do. But they should definitely bring in more instances, I feel, in the game. I think the other thing is, what is it? A lot of the those really hard open worlds are um the way that they're done, or like well, Tequadal in particular. They don't. It's not even the fact that uh, the open world part actually adds nothing to the uh, the event. Adds zero because the people are when they're grouping together to do it. Not it's not they're not there from that server most of the time. Yeah. They, they're from different servers. So it's like a small little community that's that's been made just to do that fight. Yeah, and they they use overflows, which completely is like okay. So why is it open world? Why not just have an instant? Yeah, you can just enter it. You don't have to create an overflow. Yeah. It taxi everyone in. It, it's it's a band aid solution to the, the problems of it. it. Didn't need to be open world. As an open world event, it was just a failure. 
this had content, it was great, but as an open world event, failure. It's a terrible failure. I think with any open world stuff, you have to make the uh, the difficulty level a bit lower. So it kind of puts off people who want the more difficult content. I think they should just start making instances and putting the more difficult content in there. But anyway, I think we talked enough about the uh, Tower of Nightmares and the Nightmare Within release. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below of how you felt the releases went. Uh, make sure you guys are subscribing, liking, and favoriting this video. See you later, guys.